welcome to Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to introduce Storylets, some functionality within Harlow that allows us to change the way we think about passages and their connections with an interactive story within Twine. So the term Storylet was coined by Fail Better Games in 2010. However, the generally more cited explanation of how Storylets work comes from Emily Short in a blog post from 2019. In a Twine, in particular in the implementation within Harlow 3.3, we can think of Storylets as a way of rethinking the way we understand the connections between passages and how we navigate between them. In the more traditional model, starting in the earliest versions of Twine, we move from passage to passage using links. Storylets disrupt that general conception of the connection between different passages and allows us to think of them as much more dynamic. So when we create a storylet, we use it on a per passage basis. We define a passage as a storylet, and then we use other macros to then access those storylets using lambdas. So in a previous video, I discussed a lambda as usually a creation of a comparison that defines some other action, usually on a data structure. We looked at previous usages of lambdas with the macros of for and the macro of find, where we define some type of comparison entry where something something using the where keyword. The lambdas that we work with when we work with storylets use the when keyword. This is particularly important because storylets are affected by the value of variables. So this means that if we use story-wide variables and they change, and the lambda is time sensitive, so when something is something else becomes the more operative keyword configuration as opposed to the previous where. We're working on data structures, we're interested where something is. We're working on storylines, we're interested in when something is. Again, time sensitive because things can change as we navigate stories. So when we create storylets, we then use it on a per passage basis and we define it with the storylet macro at the very top of the passage. So let's pull up example one. Notice right here I'm using the when keyword instead of where for this lambda. And this storylet is considered open when example is one. An example, of course, is a story-wide variable. Now notice this appears at the very top of the passage. This is the very important usage when we work with the storylet macro. It has to be at the top of the passage. It has to be the first line. Again, we're using the when keyword. Now, I mentioned the word open because storylets are considered in one of two possible categories, either open or closed. If their comparison is true at the time they are checked, then it is considered open. If it is considered false, then they are considered closed. Now, this is important because, again, we work with other macros to access the open available, that is, storylets within a particular story. When we use a storylet macro, we can define it across many, 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 many passages. And so we care about which ones are open and which ones are closed based on the comparisons that we wrote within those particular passages using lambdas. So we have to understand lambdas first before we can get into storylets. So we again define a storylet at the top of a passage, and this defines when it is open or when it is available if you prefer that. So let's move over to example two where we can actually start using this. So we work with, generally, accessing storylets through two other macros. So we define storylets with a macro, and then we access them generally using two other macros. It's possible to get access to storylets using other macros, but there's two macros defined to work with storylets in particular. So right here, this is the first of two of them. Open storylets, again, thinking about open or closed, will return an array. So remember, when we work with data structures, we need to remember what are the benefits, what are the potential pitfalls, and how they all work. So remember, with arrays, we can use the spread out operator, which we saw in a previous video. We can spread out back into comma-separated values. So open storylets returns all of the current open storylets. So then we're interested in, OK, Give me all of these, spread these back out, and then we're using the either macro. Now, we've previously seen that when we work with various variables, we can use the random keyword. We can access the variables, possessive s, English configuration within Harlow, random. 
the either macro kind of does the construction the other way around. That is, instead of random being at the end, the either is at the front, and we can use this to select something within a certain range. So what this says is set area to one. Next, spread out all of the open storylets right here. Pick one of them, so either of them, pick any of them within that list, set it to random. And then we're interested in the name right here. Now the reason why this is important is because open storylets has an array of all the storylets. The storylets themselves are data maps. Again, this is where knowledge of different data structures comes into play. So we have an array of data maps because we can always put other data structures inside other data structures and create even more complex structures. So in this case, set our area to one right here. And then we say, okay, give me all the ones that are open, pick one at random, that's what this line right does, then get its name because we need the name of a passage. And then right here, when we click on adventure, go to that passage. Now, example to start as a passage is affected by three other passages, and that's why this is particularly important. So I've set this up right here, area to one, and this will be the very first thing that's run. And this is important because I've set up three other passages, encounter one, encounter two, and encounter three, to be possible things that the reader might see. Notice again, I'm using the storylet macro at the top of the passage. I'm defining the lambda when it is available, so when area equals one, which is why area equals one is at the top of this passage. And so we could possibly get this encounter, or this encounter, or this encounter. And so of the open storylets, and those three will be open based on this comparison, or the setup for this comparison right here, we will get a random entry based on the names, then using its name right here, we will get access to the link to the passage, the passage name, and then we will create a link right here using the link macro, and then immediately go to a passage name. So a little more complicated as we mix these various concepts, but let's see this in action. Starting with example to start, we see adventure, nothing remarkable happens. Adventure, a merchant sells you some rice. Adventure, a merchant sells you some rice. And as we notice that we can define a large possible set of encounters using the storylet macro, and then access a random entry within those using the either macro and our knowledge of how arrays work, combining it with the knowledge of how data maps work. So again, two different data structures here put together. We set up the values we want, then we access a random entry using the either macro, the spread out operator, and open storylets. Again, storylets are either open or closed. And then we can access the name. Using the name, we can get to the passage name. And then finally, we can get a kind of setup here where they randomly encounter different things. So I mentioned there are two macros we work with storylets. The first one is open storylets. Give me a list, an array of the possible open storylets. There is another macro that we work with generally when we work with storylets, and it's called link hyphen storylet. So instead of going through the work that I just showed you, which is the slightly more complicated setup of producing an array, getting a random entry, going through all that work, we can make things much simpler. Example three shows there's just two lines of macros. One, we set up the value we're going to use in future comparison, and two, we just said, hey, give me a link to a storylet, use the text adventure, and then we define the lambda that will affect whatever we're looking for. In this particular case, we're interested in filtering all of the storylets based on this lambda to apply to the existing open storylets, or that is to generate a array of possible storylets. So all that work I just showed you over here in example two of doing this kind of multiple work right here can be reduced to two simple lines right here. Internally, this will do the very similar work that I just showed you with one notable exception. In this particular case, it will get the first available or the first open storylet. It won't bother getting a random one, it will just get the first one it can find. So if we're just interested in the first one, we can use a link storylet to achieve that and not have those multiple lines. If we're interested in true randomness, or at least randomness as exists within Harlow, then we would need the previous code within example two.
So this is the faster method if we just want the first one, but if we truly want a random one, we need the several more lines of code. So let's go ahead and move over to example three, and we will play the story from there. And we see the exact same thing again. So notice significantly less code because internally it's doing very similar operations. But remember in the differences between these two particular examples, example two is using random within the random array. Example three is just getting the first one that's available. Well, let's take this one step more because sometimes we might have a large number of possible encounters or various things we want a reader to encounter or experience and we divided them up into small story lists, just small story parts. There might be the case though, that we want some things to appear more often than others, or that is, is more likely to occur than others. Within Harlow, we use the word urgency to define this. That is, some story lists will be more urgent than others. And we define urgency along with the story map as part of a macro called urgency, in which we define it by using some whole number. So by default, each storylet, when we create it, will have a default urgency of zero. But we can always change this urgency to a higher number. And when Harlow goes to check to see what storylets are currently open, it will sort that internal array based on its corresponding urgency. So if we want something to happen more likely, that is put it to the top of the list, then we set its urgency to a higher number. Let's see this in action. So over here are three other passages I have set up over here. And we see when area is one that we've seen previously, urgency is one. Then down here, urgency is one. Then over here, urgency is two. Now this is particularly interesting because notice these are here we already had. And so all six of these will be loaded, but what will be sorted to the top will be sorted by urgency. These three will have a default urgency of zero. These two will have an urgency of one, and this will have an urgency of two. So to test this, I will add a little more text so we can see this. And this is an urgency of two. So as I mentioned, when we use link storylet, it will grab the first available, that is the first open storylet. It will do so based on the internal sorting based on the urgency that Harlow calculated. So Harlow will check all of the passages, check all of their urgencies, sort them, and then give you the top one. So right here, this will always give us the one with the highest urgency. This urgency is two, we will see this particular encounter C instead of all of these other encounters. So let's go ahead and change and play from here. See? So notice that internally, Harlow is sorting by urgency every time. If we don't really care about urgency, we don't have to set it. It will have a default, z a default value of zero, in which case all of the corresponding storylets will have the same urgency and it won't particular matter. If we're interested in urgency, that is we want things to appear more likely than others, especially if we're sorting things, or want, we want it to be the first thing that a reader might possibly use, then we can change the urgency to a higher number, two, and it will always be sorted largest to smallest. So let's talk about storylets and what I've talked about across this video. We've looked at storylets, which are a different way of thinking about passages within a story. Instead of using links, notice there are no links in the story whatsoever. So instead of using links between passages, we can define a lambda when a passage becomes open or available. And then what we can do is for each passage we define using that lambda, we can use two other macros to access those storylets. The first, as we saw in example two, is open storylets, and this returns an array of data maps where knowledge of those data structures become important. We can combine that with the spread out operator that we've seen in other videos. We can also use the either macro to access something randomly within a spread out list of comma separated values, which is where that spread out operator comes into play. And then because it is a data map, we need to use its name to access its corresponding value. Alternatively, we can use the link storylet macro to kind of shortcut that process and just gave us the first open storylet within the internal list.
Now, we need to remember that that internal list will always be sorted by urgency. So if we don't care about urgency in the case of these three packages right here, we can assume that the default urgency will be zero. If we do care about urgency, or if it becomes something we want to incorporate within our stories, then we need to define urgency using the urgency macro. Now, something to remember is that the urgency macro only works with the storylet macro. We can define urgency whenever we want at other macros, but unless it is correspondingly a storylet, that macro will have no usage. So when we define urgency, internally a Harlow will always sort from largest to smallest, which means if we want something to be more urgent, it needs to be a larger number. And as we saw with Encounter C over here, that by setting a higher urgency than any other story lists within the story, we will always get that first. Now, potentially in a much more complicated example, we can then dynamically reduce that urgency or the urgency of other passages as they are seen. But that's a much more complicated implementation of the same idea. In this video, we're just interested in introducing storylets to see what macros we work with. And again, to combine our knowledge of data structures, the previous videos, the spread out operator from previous videos, and the lambda from a previous video. All of those now combine so we can work with storylets using data structure, spread out operator, and lambdas all together by using a completely different approach to understanding passages within an interact story within Harlow in Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.